Thank you for joining me for another edition of Ketamine Clinics of Los Angeles on Facebook Live. This is our weekly Friday at 3.30 or 3 o'clock uh, live cast. And we're going to talk about ketamine and how it might help mood disorders. How it does help mood disorders, how it might help yours. Today I want to talk about the actual experience of the infusion. You've come in, you've registered, we've gone through all the preliminaries, your intravenous is established, you've been offered a pillow, a blanket, some noise canceling headphones, an eye shield if you wish. Uh, all these things are optional, but we want you to be comfortable. You've reclined, you're ready to go, and I remind you, you're going to have a dissociative experience. Relax and go with it. It will probably be sort of peripheral. It may be really catch your attention, usually positively. Almost everyone has a pleasant experience, although many people find it unfamiliar. Now, what is a disassociative experience? Disassociated means not associated. You, if you are willing to say there's a difference between the mind and the body in this way of looking at the world, it's when the mind and the body separate. Disassociated, disassociation is a very common experience in everyone's life. You're online waiting to pick up tickets. It's a long line. You don't have a newspaper or a magazine. You drift off to the movie you saw yesterday, or the girl or the guy you saw last week, or that you want to talk to your mom about X or Y or Z. You're disassociating. Your body is in one place, but your attention, or mind, if you will, is in another place. You're dissociating. Obviously, there's a continuum. At one end of the continuum, you're just peripherally aware of things that have nothing to do with where you're actually present. At the other end of the continuum, it's quite frightening. You don't know who you are, you don't know where you are, you don't know what's going on. That's why we have to really dose our ketamine appropriately. The dissociative experience is probably an important part of the therapeutic experience, but it can't be too intense. The dissociative experience has to be moderate or mild, certainly no more than moderate. And that dose that brings that about changes with the infusion number. People become very adept at getting comfortable with a dissociative experience as they move through the sequence of infusions. So what one person found, wow, pretty tough to take at 14 micrograms on their first infusion. On their fourth infusion, 18 micrograms produces an even lower amount of dissociation. That's why it's very important that people actually monitor how you're doing and where you are. If the dissociative experience is uncomfortable, it's certainly possible to dial down the dose. The way we give it here with a pump, we can reduce your ketamine infusion instantly and achieve a lower level of dissociation. We can also give several chemical adjuvants, or actually pharmacologic adjuvants, that will moderate the degree of dissociation that you're having. We can also give you reassurance. You're not going to be stuck in this new world that you've migrated to. It isn't a permanent alteration in your presence in the universe. In fact, it will dissipate within 10 to 15 minutes of the infusion being completed. As soon as you wish, if you ask that we turn it off, which of course you're not going to do. This is a pleasant experience, and it's even made even more pleasant when you know that it is not permanent, and it's not something that you don't control. It's really a choice. We help you in making that choice, and we help you in modulating that level of intensity so that you're able to explore realms that you were not, did not have access to while still not losing track of who you are and where you are. So that's our goal. We have a number of 
milestones or benchmarks that we use in assessing the degree of dissociation and we adjust the infusion accordingly. So, any questions about that? Yeah, I mean, thank you so much for that really detailed explanation, Dr. Mandel, and uh, I think you bring up a lot of good points. I had a lot of questions come up while listening to you talk. I think, for starters, uh, you mentioned the use of an infusion pump and the ability to titrate uh, the dose up or down with that and, and fine-tune it. Um, maybe you can talk a little more about that or let, up, or let our viewers know uh, what some of the alternative methods are that people are using in terms of uh, when they infuse patients. At Ketamine Clinics of Los Angeles, we use a pump, a very precise delivery system, a very small, thin bore tubing. This means that the dose we dial in is the dose that the patient gets with almost no lag time and no delay. And when we alter that dose, uh, our whole tubing holds less than, oh, less than one quarter of a teaspoon. So the other uh, clinics that are offering this treatment are often using, um, is it IV bags? Many uh, clinics put the medicine in a bag, an IV bag, and drip it. And that really doesn't give you the kind of control that we prefer, that I think is important in the treatment. Yeah, and then, you know, the other thing is you read a lot about when you look at the literature and the research as a half a milligram of ketamine per kilogram of body weight over a 40-minute period. Uh, I know you spoke in some of your other Facebook Live videos that you do a 50 or 55-minute long infusion, but in addition to that, you're talking about, in today, uh, increasing and, and or decreasing the dose as needed to fit the patient. Well, look, we, we, we live in a world where we have the privilege of actually being able to tailor our treatments to our patients. One size fits all does not work. It doesn't work in the clothing store, it doesn't work in the food market, and it certainly doesn't work with medicines. So you might say, well, no, not one size fits all, but one increment fits every kilogram. So if a 100 kilogram person gets 100 milligrams and a 50 kilogram person should get 50, kilo, 50 milligrams, well, that's just not the way it works. And particularly with ketamine, which has an enormously broad therapeutic index and a great variety of effects, it's just remarkable. We have small people who take a lot of ketamine to get to where a little bit of ketamine takes a large person. We haven't found anything we can generalize from in regard to age, gender, weight, body habitus. We have some very slender, buffed people who have like no fat. And that doesn't predict at all how much or how little ketamine they're going to take. What does do it is to start off with this half a milligram per kilogram, but we don't do it. Uh, over 40 minutes. We do it micrograms per minute and assess the patient frequently and adjust the dose accordingly. That's excellent. I, uh, I hope that this individual tailoring, I'm, I'm quite confident, we have better results than as reported in the literature. The literature says about 71% benefit we're getting 83%. That's a very big difference. So what are we doing that's different? Well, we're adjusting the dose. We're giving typically a little bit more than is given in the literature. And the literature is for 40 minutes. Our initial infusions are 50 minutes, and our subsequent infusions are 55 minutes. Well, you know, the numbers roll off your tongue, 40, 50, it's a big deal. Well, 50 is 25% more than 40. So we're giving a longer infusion at a higher dose, and we have a little bit better results. That's not a surprise. We tailor the dose to the patient, so we get a better result. It's not surprising. And when you talk about increasing or decreasing the dose, I think it's an important distinction that this is not just uh, from one infusion to the next, but even during an infusion. I hope I made that clear. We actually reassess and adjust the dosage frequently throughout the infusion. 
So in a 50 minute infusion, we might adjust the dose three or four times. Yeah, no, and I believe you did make it clear. I just wanted to reiterate it in case anyone had any question about it, because I think it's a very important distinction that you, that you were making. Well, we, we gave up using a drip a long time ago because we did not feel we could control it. You don't know how much you're giving over what interval with a drip. Sure, if you put 50 milligrams in a bag and you drip the bag so that it ends at 40 or 45 minutes, you gave the 50 milligrams. But even then, the number of milligrams per minute changes with the volume left in the bag and with the height of the bag in relation to the height of the IV site. We really like the precision of the pump and the small bore tubing. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Minow. I really enjoyed this video. I thought it was incredibly informative and uh, you made some really great points uh, about the infusion process. And I hope that our viewers feel the same way. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add in or share any fun weekend plans that you might have before we uh, say goodbye for this week's uh, Facebook Live? Last week, my family kidnapped me to a ski resort for, for a birthday that's upcoming, and I was really thrilled. It was great, and I had a wonderful weekend. This weekend, I'm going to chill at home with my wife, and I cannot wait. Thank you all for joining me. If you have particular questions or concerns, Please communicate with us and we will address them on this live stream. Good day. Thanks, Dr. Mendel. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you.